I have shown you how sonic and process intelligence work. I have illustrated the use of a few of the basic tools such as auto false echo suppression and echo reform. In most cases, instruments with sonic and process intelligence work right out of the box. But what about the more difficult applications that don't? In these cases, we can use the advanced features to fine tune the instrument. Now let's look at a few real applications that illustrate this. Application 1, Dusty Solids. This echo is from a Citroen's LR460 monitoring a very dusty solids application in the food industry. When we first looked at this echo profile, we saw a nice little echo right here. This was exciting because we were told that this would be a really difficult application. Then we did a visual inspection of the silo and manually dipped our level. This is what we saw. That nice echo we saw near the top was caused by a shelf within the silo. Our material echo was somewhere hidden in the mess at the end of the echo profile. If we are to find the true material echo, we are going to have to use some of the process intelligence tools. First, we will use the echo reform tool to clean up the profile and enhance our true material echo. Next, we will use the auto false echo suppression tool to eliminate the obstruction echo caused by the shelf. Great! Now we can see the material echo. As we monitor the filling, we see that the true echo is continually monitored as the material rises in the silo. The customer was very happy with the performance, and in fact, they have purchased seven more LR460 radar devices. Tall, narrow silo. Here's an echo profile from another solids application. On this application, we're using a Citroen's LU10 ultrasonic transceiver and an Echomax XPS30 transducer. So what do you think of this echo profile? What could possibly be causing all of these echoes? Well, here's a picture looking down the silo. Each one of these cross members can be seen on the echo profile. The LU10 is set to use the ALF algorithm to select the correct material echo. As you can see, it's doing a fairly good job considering the application. What could we do to help boost the material echo confidence and reduce the chance of falsely selecting one of the cross members as the material echo? The LU10 doesn't have auto false echo suppression in its toolbox. We could manually manipulate the TVT curve, but with all those obstructions, this would take a while. The easiest thing to do is to use one of the echo filters. The filter we will use is the narrow echo filter. This filter is similar to the spike filter. However, when using this filter, you can select the width of the echo to eliminate. Here's the profile after running the narrow echo filter. You can see how the filter has eliminated the peaks from each of the echoes and given them a flat top. Even the material echo has been affected. However, because the material echo is larger and has more area than the obstruction echoes, the LU10 will have no difficulty tracking the true echo throughout the measurement range. Application 3, Dynamic TVT. This echo profile is from a Citrans LR250 monitoring a bitumen application. Bitumen is a heavy, sticky, black petroleum product that must be heated in order for it to flow. In the vessel, there is a lot of vapor and moisture that eventually coats any surface with bitumen. One of our competitor's radar devices was installed on this application, but was not performing to the customer's satisfaction. At least once a week, the competitor's device would set off the high-level alarm, even though the bitumen level was far below the high-level setting. This false alarm was due to the bitumen coating the inside of the standpipe. Their radar device would have to be removed from the process and the standpipe would have to be cleaned. Clearly, this is not the ideal situation. Siemens was invited to install the LR250 radar device. This echo profile clearly shows the material buildup in the standpipe, but due to our dynamic TVT curve, the LR250 automatically shapes around this false echo and tracks the true material echo. The competitor's device was not able to do this because their TVT equivalent is static and not dynamic. The customer was very pleased with the performance of the Citrans LR250. Just to quickly recap, sonic and process intelligence are the backbone for reliable non-contacting level measurement readings. Sonic intelligence is used in our ultrasonic devices and process intelligence is used in our radar devices. 95% of the time our devices are going to work without any additional tuning because we automatically filter electrical noise, use multi-shot sampling, and have a dynamic TVT curve. In the other 5%, we can use the advanced features like 
narrow echo filter, the ALF algorithm, auto false echo suppression, and echo reform to fine tune the instrument. This concludes our introduction to sonic and process intelligence. If you want more information, we have a number of different documents and resources for your reference. Understanding Ultrasonic Level Measurement by Steve Milligan and Dr. Henry Vandelin. Please refer to Chapter 2, The Sound and the Slurry, for specific details on sonic intelligence. Our product manuals have excellent information pertaining to sonic and process intelligence as well. If you still have questions, feel free to send an email to the eLearning mailbox. Again, my name is Josh Kanzler. I thank you for your time. Take care.